Hey folks, it's Candy Lantero with part two of the Philly Paranormal case of the Shelley Turner case and the help that Valerie Morrison, local Philly psychic, gave to it. So where we last left off on part one, I would suggest you watch it because this is going to be just as all over the place as part one was. Sorry. But uh, last we heard, Valerie had been kicked out of the house by Vivian King, Shelley Turner's mother, because Valerie felt that she channeled Shelley and accused Vivian King directly to her face in her house that she had murdered and hidden Shelley. Needless to say, they were kicked out, psychics and cops. The case gets a bit cold. And on February 19th, four weeks to when Shelley disappeared, there was a parade to find her. On February 20th, Shelley would have been found. Shelly Turner was discovered dead on February 20th, uh, one day after the parade to try and find her, after the march to try to find her, I should say. Um, she was discovered by a man just walking his dog. He saw something under a tarp, didn't look right, called the police. It was indeed Shelly in her lavender tracksuit. And as Valerie said, missing her shoes, missing her jacket. Uh, What the interesting thing is, is if you guys live in West Philly, you've seen these before. You probably just haven't noticed it. Um, Though these just look like statues, this is actually a fountain. And it is very interesting because, as we said, um, Valerie said that she felt that Shelly would be found near holy water, quote unquote. Well, this is known as the Catholic Total Abstinence Union Fountain. And this fountain was built as a... I guess you could say, think of it as like the dare was the do not do drugs thing. This fountain was built as something to convince people not to drink. Okay, so the total abstinence fountain is not abstinence from, you know, doing not chastity. It's abstinence from drinking. And so what is very interesting is not only what Valerie said about this being near holy water, but also that when she was found almost immediately... A lot of people who had had uh, Vivian King's back were starting to look at her like, I don't know, I found like, feel like you had something to do with this. Um, because of the way she was reacting, she wasn't reacting, you know, how a lot of people do during grief. And that can be uh, incorrect judgment too, because, you know, people grieve different ways. But people, it was starting to come out more and more that she was known to be a drunk. Um, a classic alcoholic who did not like her daughter, who got into it with her daughter, who would make her daughter clean the house top to bottom. And I mean, the rumors really started to fly, especially after the funeral. This is a picture of the funeral. And they claim that Vivian King during this funeral was acting kind of like a celebrity, like everybody was at the funeral to see her, that she was waving, that she was smiling, that she was enjoying the cameras and the attention. Um, Just not something that, you know, people would assume to see a mother do at a funeral. Um, also during this time, uh, when I, I guess she must've felt the heat of the community. Y'all know when the hood gets to talking, it, it can get a little uncomfortable. I think that this was the reason that she started to go on a very popular TV. I mean, a radio show, excuse me, called what AM with a Mary Mason. And she had apparently been interviewed almost up to several times on that radio station And Mary Mason at first was very, very um, non-biased and kind to this lady and offered to raise $25,000 to help, you know, find Shelly $25,000 to the reward, as well as adding $10,000 of her own money. Um, And apparently when she told Vivian King that she was like, oh, okay, great. You know, not like, thank you, outpouring, thank you, or even, you know, the stoic, quiet, you know, thank you. I I really appreciate that. She was just apparently very, eh, all right, great. Sounds wonderful. So the rumors started flying. Uh, Apparently, Sis was a regular at the top bar, which again, if you're from Southwest, West Philly, you used to see that old corroded sign. I'm sure it's been knocked down and turned into some gentrified coffee shop by now, but... For a while, the top bar 
was quite a little scene on this corner. I mean, and ugh, that thing seemed to be open at all hours of the day. I'd be on a 52 bus seeing that thing open. But the point is that um, she apparently had a huge issue with alcohol. So it was just very interesting that this young girl turns up dead a hundred yards from the Catholic total abstinence fountain. Mm. So again, um, when the suspicion really started to mount, um, I don't think she minded too much at first, but th- when she started going that media blitz tour and it still didn't really help anything, that's when she started getting desperate. Vivian was certainly acting strange, um, both before and after the funeral. Only a week after Shelley went missing, Vivian packed up all of her awards, all of her trophies, all of her medals, and Shelley had plenty of them that she had won all across the country. She had packed up her shoes that were specially signed by Flo Jo, okay, and put them all in a box attached a note to them that wrote ha ha and addressed it to Shelly Turner's half sister who she mostly most likely did not know um Shelly the man who was claimed as Shelly Turner, Turner's father claimed that he did not know that that was his child until he received this box of medals I'm saying allegedly because I don't know but she was acting very strange Um, When she would go on a radio station with this Mary Mason, interview after interview started getting very strange for Mary. And Mary was saying, like, I was just getting the vibe as a mother that something wasn't right, something was off. And finally, the last interview that they had together, she asked her outright, did you kill your daughter on air, baby, live on air? And Vivian replied, no, that she did not. She had no idea what happened to her. And then as soon as they weren't on air, she looks at Mary Mason and says, you know, it was just so strange to see her teeth shining in the moonlight. Girl, what? So Mary Mason called the police, okay? She called the police automatically. And from there, I mean, you guys already see it. The mother decided to confess. I mean, she just confessed outright to the police. Yes, she did it. She was saying, she was saying that the reason that she had killed her, that what happened was that Shelly returned home very late at night and that the entire time that she was gone, that she had been drinking um, and apparently drinking very heavily. And that when her and Shelly got into it in the house, that her and Shelly fought. She claims that her and Shelly fought got to the car she lured Shelly in by saying I'm going to drop you off at the police station and turn you in as a runaway because you can't live here anymore um as she was driving which I mean you guys know that there's a police station not too far from Parkside Ave you Philly folks uh as she was driving past that she just kept going and went over to Fairmont Park and said you know if you want to fight let's fight here and of course the child she loved her mother she was like no I don't want to fight you I just want this to be over And from there, it gets very wonky. I'm not sure if she dragged her out of the car. I'm not sure if Shelly ran or away or what, but the mother ends up shooting her in the face and the hands and the chest about five or six times and put a tarp over her and left her there. Um, Also, the investigators let her know right there that they had actually been suspecting her from a long time, especially after she pulled that stunt giving away the the awards to the half sister and when he told her this uh she allegedly laughed at them so very weird very creepy not sure if it's true not saying i'll plead the police or anything but you know hey i don't know i wasn't there um and of course when the community heard this they were just shocked they were shocked they were appalled i think a lot of them already knew i'm going to read to you some things um but the mother ended up recanting anyway. Like about three days later, she recanted. But by that time, y'all, again, y'all know how the community does. So one of her friends, I'm not sure if this was um, Quanda Bruckner. I'm not sure if this was Miss Crawley. But she said to the a, a, a newspaper, her mother never liked Shelly. I could tell by the way Shelly acted and spoke. And I could tell she did everything in her power to appease that woman. That's why she was so nice and accommodating to people she met outside of the house too. 
this was not the only quote. I mean, that was just the one that I thought was very poignant, especially to be coming from one of her friends. Um, a lot of folks, a lot of the coaches said that she was not an involved parent at all. They said that Shelly was getting straight A's, that she was made to basically raise her little sister because um, she had a little sister in the home and that she was the one who took care of her alcoholic mother, cleaned the house from top to bottom. Another friend said that they felt like the mother did not want Shelly to succeed, that she would try to keep her um, busy and cleaning, not to keep her away from boys or to keep her in the house, you know, being overprotective, but so she could miss track meets or so that she wouldn't be able to pass tests, that she tried to sabotage her at every point that she could. Um, other people said that she was just downright mean to anybody would cuss you out, that she was a mean alcoholic. Um, I mean, it was, it was just thing after thing. Uh, the, her pastor pretty much tried to stand beside her, and there were some people in the community who I just think that they couldn't wrap their mind around it, that, okay, yes, this might be an alcoholic, but I don't think that they could see that as, okay, well, she definitely harmed her or that she harmed her maliciously. And um, when Sis recanted, she claimed that the police were just really drilling down on her. When people asked her, okay, well, who did it then if not you? She said everything from, you know, it was Shelly's boyfriend to it was Shelly's stepfather to the coaches were, you know, being inappropriate with her, that maybe they did it, that she was robbed, that she looked like another girl in West Philly. Um, and mind you, Shelly, from what I read, was like five, nine, six feet. There was no way that she had a twin. We don't have a whole lot of stallions in Philly, baby. But she was claiming that another girl looked just like her who had a hit on her, hit out on her. And maybe that's what happened to Shelly. I mean, she told every story that she could have. In the end, I am sorry to say, Sis was convicted um, and only got about 15 years on paper. I don't think she got, I don't even think she did that time. She may have. What I can say is 100% is that Sis is out right now in the big city, the small town that is Philly somewhere, living her life, doing her thing. She's out and about free as a bird. Um, I don't know what she's doing. I don't particularly care to know, but um Sis really sounds like she got the jackpot of daughters. Just from reading, I, I, I didn't even cover half of the stuff that I could have covered, guys, about this young lady. And she just blew it. She she gave it all away. Um, of course, Valerie pretty much disappears at this story because they weren't going to use her in a court of law and everything. But Valerie's still practicing today, okay? I, I believe Sis is, if not in her 90s, she's certainly in her 80s. Her um, neighborhood loves her. She does readings at her Walmart. So if you're by the, I mean, not her Walmart, the Rite Aid. If you're at the Rite Aid near, uh, you know, Henry Ave, maybe you'll catch Valerie and, and get a reading, though she does charge professionally. You know, I'm not trying to say not to give Sis her money. But um, she also lost a daughter and she has a shrine to her daughter. I believe she lost her daughter to a car accident. And it really just shows you the differences and the mothering. And at least she was there to try to help Shelly get some justice. Um, Shelly's friends still love her. They still, you know, go on. They, they meet in Fairmont Park. You know, that was not just where she died. That's also where she trained. And uh, it was just... It's heartbreaking that, you know, someone could have gotten just the full jackpot of kids. She got a jackpot of a kid, you know, not every, everyone might have, you know, a daughter, but are you going to have a daughter who doesn't like sweets, who doesn't like to, you know, drink soda and not be messy all day, who's good with being neat, who does things the first time you ask for them, who stays out late, like what, one time. And I mean, you know, just an, an amazing track star at that. I'm going to leave this clip right here of um, Shelly's friends racing for her. And I think that that'll be the best way just to honor her. Thanks guys for holding on. I know this was everywhere, but I do hope it helped. And please enjoy this pen relays track. All right. It's a blast from the class. Ciao, ciao. 100 meters and William Penn in the lead again. Coach Tim Hickey's got to be happy uh, here with uh, two great victories uh, for in the Philadelphia areas here. Uh, scheduled to anchor for him was Quanda Buckner coming down the home stretch. Overbrook is in second place. The school 
that Will Chamberlain went to. Over Brook, among others, Wayne Hightower, Paul Hazard, etc. Outstanding tradition, as is the tradition established by William Penn. So without their lost comrade, Shelley Turner, who we profiled for you earlier, this is another great victory for William Penn. Three minutes, 47 and seven tenths of a second uh, for the winning time for this team in a, in a race of the best high schools in the greater Philadelphia area. Coming up, we'll have uh, the same type of race for the Philadelphia boys, also the 4 by 400 and they have some, some national caliber competition in here. See some of the umbrellas popping up as we take a look at the unofficial results. The Philadelphia girls 4x4, William Penn wins it in 347-7, followed by Overbrook and by Simon Gratz in third place. David, I don't think that, uh, I didn't see any little uh, little black marks or any, any you no know, armbands type thing on there, but I've got to believe that quietly they're acknowledging their fallen Comrade. And we'll talk more about that right now. Craig Mazbeck standing by with the winners from William Penn. Thanks, Dave. With two members of the winning team from William Penn, your second victory here in the Penn Relays Championships was a, it was a good race. Thank you. Thank you. Now, talk to me about the fact that you had a teammate earlier this year. Tragedy occurred. Were you thinking of her at all when you came here this weekend? Yes. yes. And did the coach talk to you, Coach Jim Higgy? Did he talk to you before the meet about that, about the fact she would have been with you? Well, not really. He just was like, do this for Shay. And that's what we did. We dedicated that to Shay. Yeah. Well, there you have it, David. Dedication to their fallen comrade. And as you see that flag in the middle of your screen and half mast in honor of the late Shelley Turner who ran for William Penn High School here at Franklin Field. The unofficial results, Philadelphia.